Alrighty then, it is food storage recipe experimentation, experimentation day. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try something my mother made, which was Aunt Jenny's meat pie. I have a pound of ground beef I need to use up, right? And I want to make sure that's ground beef from the store, not from my cans, that it is something I can make from my food storage. I could certainly use my homed canned ground beef, which is a little bit over a pound. I am going to use my own dehydrated carrot rounds. I do have fresh carrots. I could use my dehydrated onions, and this will call for sour cream. I could use my sour cream powder. And I'm gonna place this in two or three layers over scallop taters, because that's something I have a lot of in my food storage. So I'm gonna use my scallop taters. I have many bags of that. A fresh onion, some cream of mushroom, a home beef broth that I've canned, and the only kind of peas I like, which are lassoor. But I could certainly use dehydrated frozen peas if I wanted to. So I'm just wanting another food storage recipe in my arsenal in the event that I need to live off my food storage because this is something we love to make. And potatoes are very filling, so I'm gonna give it a whirl. Experiment in your kitchen. It's fun. It can often be tasty or it can be discarded. So a little bit of olive oil and a small, just like half a pat of butter. And I'm gonna saute my onions in this to get started. Then I'm gonna put my ground beef in there and get it brown. Aunt Jenny's meat pie ain't hard. It's not gonna be a meat pie like we think of it, but that's what my mother called it. And I have wiped butter around a three-quart Pyrex casserole from back in the day. And I'm going to start out with one layer of my scalloped potatoes that I've dehydrated. So here is what I'm going to use after I put the meat mixture with the vegetables on top of the taters. This is, I'd say, um, a can of cream of mushroom, one cup of sour cream, I'm gonna put a little bit of cooking sherry in here and a cup of milk. So it's a little thick, oh yeah. Experimentation in progress. So our onions were translucent. I threw in my pound of fresh ground beef. If I was using food storage, it would be one of my pints, which is a little over a pound. What's this here sauce? Lowry seasoning salt, garlic pepper, black pepper. And I'm gonna get that browned up. Still ain't hard, just an experiment. Our ground beef is nicely browned. So let's make a little area in the center where we can do a little bit of flour, get ourselves a little redneck gravy going and incorporated. And let's face it, I'm Southern, so everything needs a good gravy, right? Rural readiness, Nina makes a chocolate gravy on biscuits, okay? Gravy is all that. Still isn't hard. So I'm gonna work this in, you ain't gotta watch. We absorb that little amount of grease, because remember we put oil and a little butter, so let's put some of our own beef broth in here. It's three quarters of a pint. Let's go with all of it. And then I'm gonna get my carrots that I have soaking in hot water in here. I'm gonna drain that water off, let them get a little fatter. And it'll be very surprising if you dehydrate carrots into small rounds. I use my mandolin to slice them. They shrink up to nothing, but then they'll plump up and look and taste just like a real carrot, because they are real carrots. So here is where they came from, look how tiny. And this is what they are, just halfway refreshed. So I'm gonna get those in here. And like I said, I drained off the water. So I'm gonna start to ladle. I've got my layer of scallop taters on the bottom. I'm gonna use a slotted spoon, spread my first layer of this meat mixture on the bottom. Now remember, these are dehydrated potatoes. If you were using freshly sliced potatoes, to get those tender is what you would be getting tender 
at 350 in the oven. So it would take considerably longer than it's going to with these. This is like getting a box thing of scalloped potatoes. So now let me get a not slotted spoon. Whoops. I hit you in the head and get some liquid in. But remember on top of this, we're going to put that sour cream milk mixture that we made. And I will put cheese on the top because cheese is up there with butter, right? I just want to get this evenly as I can over the top. And remember, I buttered this dish so nothing should stick. So now I'm gonna do another layer of potatoes. As Tommy from I'm a Redneck Cockerham says, potatoes. So here we go with another layer from our meat mixture and let's use our slotted spoon. I don't think this will be too bad because it's my mama's Aunt Jenny's meat pie. There's our second meat layer. And let's get this mixture on the top. And I do want to spread that around to the edges. And if you have any potatoes that are sticking up on the side, squish them in there because it's just like making the stuff from a box. They will uh, tend to get real crispy, almost a little burned. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the oven after I wipe these sides down so that doesn't bake on there. So that was 30 minutes at 350. And let's see. Our potatoes could go some more, just a little bit more. So I'm not gonna put my cheese on yet. Yep, they sure could. So it's easy to check. And remember, if you're using fresh potatoes that you made into scallop taters, you're gonna cook it, you're gonna start this at an hour, say 45 minutes for sure. So there she blows, it did cook for 55 minutes and then I put cheese on it and it melted. And this is the temperature of molten lava. So this is gonna sit here about 20, 25 minutes before I even cut into it. And hopefully I'll remember to take a picture of it. I don't always, I'm old, I forget things. All right, my turn. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling it, I gotta fool it. Oh. Oh, that was good. Mm-hmm. I like that. So there is a keeper food storage item. Easy peasy. One pound of ground beef. Brilliant. I can feel a lot.